on the set today with Deborah Gardner, and Deborah is in town in Dallas. Uh, she just spoke at our NSA North Chapter meeting. Thank you very much. She Pleasure. gave us so many insightful behind the scene, one tips, but information about the speaking industry and trends going into 2019, 2000, what to look for, um, room rates in the United States, building why the shutdown is affecting the speaking industry, what's happening around the world and why it should affect us as speakers. Mm -hmm. And I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. So it was so interesting to me. Good. So thank you for presenting to that uh, group today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. You bet. Right. Um, now, you came in from Arizona. Yes. Where you are from? Da Scottsdale. Oh, uh, Buckeye, which is kind of what we call East LA. East, okay. Um, but as a marine bred, I've moved everywhere, so. So you're used to being on yes. the road traveling a yes. lot. Yes, right, exactly. And you have been in the hospitality industry for 25 plus years. That's, Correct. That was your background. Correct. Before you became a professional speaker, educator. Correct. Well, 28 years and still counting. I'm still continuing um, some accounts as a meeting professional. Okay. Uh, the supplier side was like the hotel industry, um, which I worked with many, many brand, major brand hotels, which was a delight, uh, a delightful experience. But as far as the meeting professional side of things, I still do have some accounts that I handle. Well, that's why you can become be the pro today. You're the pro right. in the room because you've sure. been there, you've done that. Sure. You've seen the trends through the years. Yes. You know what many professionals are looking for and what they're not looking for. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So yes. I know yeah. that this morning you really talked about the overall view and the big picture of the industry. Yes. So let's kind of bring that down a little bit. Okay. And kind of a lot of our members are... Um, the term wannabe speakers is bad, but I would say new speakers, new to the industry, trying to figure out and um, swim with the sharks. Right. You know, swim with the big boys. Right. We all want to play in a bigger league. Right, right. So right. from your perspective, Deborah, what are the two or three things that a new speaker should be doing, one, to start the speaking industry, and then two, how should we be connecting or communicating with the meeting professional. Oh, where do I begin? Um, <laughs> We've only got about questions. an hour and a half, know, so right? you know. Only... <laughs> this is these are great questions, um, and I call them newly experienced speakers mm -hmm. um, because they're coming from their background of corporations or, or associations or even uh, housewives are, are starting to, to come into the speaking industry um, because everybody has a message. They, all, they have an expertise they want to share. Um, but as far as knowing the meetings world, th that's where it starts. Who are their clients? Um, right. What are the basic 101 things that they need to know from their titles to their job duties? And like you mentioned, communicating with them. That is, is key, and what better way to bond and connect as a, a new, refreshing relationship with those that you want to serve than communication. Right, that sounds like a new book that should, you should be writing. That <laughs> sounds know, right? like a, your, your, new, your next book that should be coming so out. So much yes. we have to do as speakers, right? But um, I talk about the meetings world because there is a gap um, between the meetings world and the speaking world. Okay. And, uh, my mission is to help close that gap. Um, so speaking to the meetings world uh, where I come from and speaking now on the, side, the, the speaker side, it's really fun and exciting to, to try to close that gap. And the best way to do that is to talk about some things and challenges and, and issues between the two parties. And one of them, as you mentioned, is communication and the terminology between the two. And so I, I go back and forth between both entities and, and trying to, to work on, on helping to do business with each other more often. Well, you school us today on saying that, no, the meeting professional is that's the correct name. It's not a party planner. Right. You know, it's not a it's not a Mary Kay yeah. salesman or right. a Tupperware <laughs> party planner. Right. It's she's a she's a meeting professional. And the more right. that we can know what she does, how many right. things that she has to produce and and uh, do behind the scenes. Correct. The better we are going to be able to connect with her. Right. Or him. Or him. Yes. Uh, they wear many hats. Yes. And I want the speaking community to understand that they're only one piece of a very fast-moving puzzle. But 
We're the most important piece, right? I believe we are. Yeah, and know, so that's what us. I'm trying to teach them, right? <laughs> well, education and training no. is, but um, on the media still, professional still small side, piece. yeah, we're still a small piece. They they have so many other logistics and details to deal with. Sure. And there's a lot of competition right now um, in the corporate and association world in particular because they're trying to receive repeat attendees to come back. Um, they're all trying to utilize their conferences as marketing mechanisms right. to try to get everybody at their their events, whether it's a product launch or just get the social buzz out there that, hey, I'm attending this conference, are you? Uh, there's a lot of strategy and purposes behind it. Okay. And uh, that's, what, that's something that speakers need to understand and you how bet. they can be part of the team of the meeting planning uh, departments. Sure. Other than out. just a piece of it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So today I'm hoping that I was able to open up a whole new world on a business strategy to start out this 2019 year here at the Dallas wonderful NSA chapter. Um, and hopefully they see from a different perspective of what they need to know in the meetings world. Well, I tell people that it's all about social media these days and the meeting world is social. Yes. You know, and that, that's how yeah. a lot of that's how a lot of speakers also um, announce their meetings. It's on right. Twitter and Snapchat and LinkedIn right. and YouTube. Right. But in order to be social media, you have to be social. Right. You've got to be right. on it. You've got to be right. out there talking right. about it. Right. Um, right. And right. so I think that a lot of speakers, especially you know, there's the majority of speakers. I'm just kind of generalizing are, are 50 years and older. Uh -huh. That's hard for them to get around their head sure. around. It's like oh. I've got to market and now I've got yeah. to network in with the 100,000 people as opposed to before it was just a small group of right. group of individuals. Right. Everything has changed. And yes. um, besides the economy, the meetings industry dictates what we do. And I call the speaking industry a, a, lo a lonely sport um, because we can easily be in, in our home office um, or on the road in a hotel by ourselves. Yeah. Um, so we have to be social. We have to branch out not only to the meetings world, but also our speaking world too in that community as well. Yeah, somebody that was here last year was Mark Hunter, the sales hunter. Yes. And he is great on social media. Yes. I mean, every other day I'm getting something, yes. I'm getting a sales tip from yes. him. Yes. But it's always in an airport. Right. You know, he's always, hey, I'm Mark Hunter, the sales hunter. I'm in yes. Beijing, Beijing today, you know, and right. we're going to talk about. Right. And that one, that tells about where he just came from. It shows him as a professional traveling. Sure. He's, he's walking the walk, walking right. the talk. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and yeah. he's announcing where he's going to be next. So he's yes. helping his next appearance in the next yes. Uh, meeting. Yes. And he's got, you know, yes. 100,000 followers. Yes. Perfect. Yes. That's, and he's he, doing a great job. He's walking the talk, as you mentioned, because in sales, it used to be, you know, touching every eight times gets their attention. Today, it's 12 to 15 times. And yeah. he's... He's definitely displaying that you process, bet. so good for him. Definitely, it's true. definitely. Very true. Do you think that the bigger the audience the speaker has and is willing to share that, his audience with the events, is a bonus? Sharing the audience? Uh, so like, let's with, say that okay. you have 300,000 people that follow you on, oh. on all your social media. Right. You know platforms right. channels right so if you were going to say great i'm going to be in vegas talking to the beer association on something right you know i'll do four or five tweets before there sure. very helpful very helpful and some uh, meeting professionals uh, look for that how many followers you, you sure. have how many likes or posts you have um and some don't so it just all depends but offering that to you know your client mm -hmm. Uh, or decision maker, right. it's huge because it's going to only help promote them. It's all about how how their event can make money. It's a value added. It is a value added, and you they bet. appreciate when you come up with some creative ideas and and offer those type of value added ideas. Well, yeah. I've been speaking for a few years now, and I still struggle on how to make the first connection mm -hmm. with a meeting planner or with an organization. Mm -hmm. What would you tell me? First of all, start with your terminology. Understand the lingo. Okay. Just like the speaking industry and community, we have a lingo. We have, you know, CSP. We have, you know, different things that we say that we all understand. Well, the meetings world also has their terminology too. And it can be something as simple as, uh, you know, 
don't call me a meeting planner anymore. As a matter of fact, right. my new book is called yeah. Stop Calling Me a Meeting Planner. Okay. Um, just so, so we can get, because again, the it's not so much the title for yeah. them, it's just that it's a perception. You know that whatever industry that I want to speak to, I need to know the acronyms. Right. In that industry. Right, right, sure. exactly, same thing. So if you want to connect and bond with them, start learning the terminology. That's a great tip. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, well, Deborah, I know that you're really busy. Tell us where are you going after this. I mean, I know you're going to your aunt's house after this, but professionally, <laughs> well, I, where are you going after this? Well, I've been doing a lot of NSA chapters. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be okay. in Tampa next week. Okay. Um, but it's interesting to see what is happening in 2019. We're still doing well. Um, supply and demand is there, and um, we're going to see a lot of short-term bookings. Um, associations, of course, are much longer, but take advantage of those short term bookings. Okay. I, I just got one for March and it was a repeat customer as, as a matter of fact. So we have to take advantage of, of really making sure that um, we need to sell right now because as the economy yeah. has been doing really well, um, Good time. it's, yeah, it's, yeah. we're going on almost 10 years now of just up, 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 up and uh, something's going to happen and we just need to be prepared and make sure we get on the phone and start selling ourselves right now and getting those you know, business booked. Okay. Now, before you run off, I know you as the thought leader, as the big picture okay. um, for the speakers. Let's, okay. let's flip around the other side. When you're on stage, mm -hmm. tell me, what do you speak about? What are you, what's your, what are you passionate about? Oh, my day job. Yeah. Um, I am a competitive performance expert. Competitive performance expert. Yes. So that means to me, uh, skateboarding, snowboarding, <laughs> Swimming. Swimming. Yes. 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 I'm a master swimmer. Uh, I've been swimming competitively since I was seven. So I have this very inner competitiveness. Um, so I teach people how to compete from within. Okay. Starting with yourself instead of feeling like everything around you is, is competing against you. And I focus on sales and negotiating as well. Um, but sales I, and negotiating, I, that's important to everybody. We is. all have to go through you, that. You gotta learn that yep. in anything and everything in your life. Um, but it's about being, you know, being competitive with yourself. Mostly. Interesting. I like Interesting. it. It's fun. And I do utilize a lot of swimming analogies on the platform as well. Okay. Well, <laughs> I will put all your information down below. Okay. So right down below here, you'll find all of her information. She is available to travel worldwide of course. Um, at the moment's notice. I know you've got your passport in your purse, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, so, Deborah, so thank you very much for you, sitting down Lynn. with me today. I totally enjoyed this. I'm thank honored. You. Have a good day. Thank you. Boom. Another one done.